itself. A lot of Pokemon are there to set up Trick Room and they're very bulky or have the right abilities to make sure that they can set up Trick Room safely, whereas Hatterene uh, can get the damage going straight away and can be in turn supported by NDD setting down that Psychic Train and helping to turn on the full strength of Expanding Force. And here we go, Swiss round 13. Ben, this is the most normal team that this chef has cooked up so far, leading with Hatterene and NDD over on uh, Lucas side, it is going to be Ogre Pond and Amoongus leads to go. Looks like Trick Room has a chance to go up here, but you do have to watch out for that Amoongus on the other side. Yeah, Amoongus on the other side. Of course, Hatterene's ability is Magic Bounce is going to help prevent uh, Spore from disrupting that. NDD has no similar protection. Um, Ogre Pond also threatening a ton of damage, but doesn't like this position. Just going to switch out into the back and bring in the Incineroar. Yep, Incineroar will take the field here. The Intimidates are not going to matter at all versus the Hatterene and the Indeedy, but uh, it will be a nice pivot point to be able to possibly go for some big uh, carding shots or some knockoffs into the two opposing Pokemon on the other side. Yeah, an interesting uh, detail of this Trick Room team from Ben is that it is clear amulet on the Hatterene, so it doesn't have to worry too much about parting shot. Yep, Indeedee will Terrasilize here, turning into the fairy t or fire type, and here's a healing wish from Indeedee. It's, gonna, it's just going to knock itself out and try to send in a Pokemon safely to heal, but here is Amoongus using Spore in Hatterene's Magic Bounce that is going to bounce back, but it does not affect Amoongus, so Hatterene uses Trick Room, and this is a setup for Ben to be able to safely get in a Trick Room Sweeper here. Yeah, this is a really good play by Ben. When you're a player with so much experience playing hard Trick Room, you see all of your different paths through it, the way that you're going to get Trick Room set up safely here, and so the path that Ben identifies is first you have to make sure that the uh, Ogre Pond Hearth Flame on the other side can't just KO Hatterene with Ivy Cudgel, and so Hatterene goes for the defensive Trastalization. Amoongus can't spore the Hatterene, but you don't really want to get NDD spored and stuck on the field wasting away your turns. And so Healing Wish, it doesn't really accomplish anything. Horrible will eventually heal because it came in at full health. Um, but what it does in the meantime is it gets NDD off the field. Torkoal gets to come in for free. The Trick Room goes up. Nothing is asleep. You have the four full turns now with your two most damaging options. Hatterene with Expanding Force turned on and Torkoal with Eruption turned on. But then there's Incineroar. It's immune to Expanding Force. It resists Eruption. That's the kind of role it can play on these balance teams to help. You just use its typing to disrupt the Trick Room and make life a little bit more difficult for Ben. He's going to have to find other coverage options to deal with Incineroar um, because he can't just use those same type of attack boosted moves that would make it so much easier. Amoongus Force to Protect does not want to eat this eruption that sun boosted from this Torkoal here. Uh, Torkoal does get the eruption off, will hit Incineroar again. Incineroar with that great resist and this immunity here, uh, not even taking 50% damage from the eruption as Hatterene will use Expanding Force into that dark type immunity here. Incineroar uses Parting Shot, will lower Torkoal's special attack stat uh, and also allow Luca to be able to react to this Trick Room mode. Uh, so Incineroar will go back to Luca. now Luca gets to send out back out one Pokemon. It will be that Raging Bolt with the Assault Vest, so um, trying to bulk out this Trick Room. Yeah, uh, Incineroar, uh, the Incineroar gets the Parting Shot down on Torkoal, lessens the damage. Output doesn't really take too much damage. Uh, itself out of that turn despite taking a choice specs eruption in the sun and now raging bolt uh, with the assault vest comes back in still won't really love taking our combination of expanding force or dazzling gleam and eruption and amoongus still just as threatened as ever you have to imagine that even with one parting shot down on torquil amoongus is not going to be able to take a choice specs eruption no it does not want to take this eruption at all uh you know eruption it's one of the strongest moves in the game coming from Torkoal because of the Sun Boost and the fact that this Torkoal is still at full health here. Amoongus has to switch out, cannot stay in, will have to go back into the Incineroar that resists, but again, uh, that first eruption did a lot. This one won't do quite as much because of that parting shot that Luca used the turn prior. So here is another eruption into both these Pokemon that resist. So again, that Assault Vest on that Raging Bolt, not very effective on it as well as, ooh, all right, cool. Hatterene picks up the KO with the Dazzling Gleam, not going for an expanding force that turn, just maybe expecting that Incineroar to switch back in. So Incineroar gets knocked out there as Raging Bolt goes for a boosted uh, Thunderbolt because of the Protosynthesis and brings Torkoal down to just a little bit of hit points. Yeah, Torkoal going down low. Um, 
the Raging Bolt has the Protosynthesis from the Sun, meaning that does so much damage. And yeah, the name of the game is getting out of Trick Room for Luka. So even a turn like that, uh, Incineroar gets traded away. There was something more the damage had to go. Um, but now we only have two turns of Trick Room left. He's managed to use the resistances of Incineroar uh, and the bulk of Raging Bolt to get through a couple of them. But now Ben's got to capitalize on these last couple turns of Trick Room. Raging Bolt, of course, cannot protect itself, cannot go for Thunderclaps with Psychic Terrain down. And so he's looking pretty vulnerable and is a vulnerable spot for the team. Uh, if Amoongus were to come into that slide, you have to imagine uh, it's easy to target a fire move in that direction and just lock in one more KO in this turn of Trick Room. Yeah, so again, that Raging Bolt, Protosynthesis boosted with the Assault Vest, uh, really proven how bulky it can be. I mean, it, it switched into those just extremely safely. Took the damage really well here as Ben will retreat Torkoal here, uh, will replace it with a with an Urshifu, so Urshifu will take the field here. Uh, operating in the sun, not ideal conditions for Urshifu as Luka will opt to Terrasilize. It is going to be that Ogre Pond will get that Embody aspect and get an attack boost. So uh, this Ogre Pond right now threatening damage right as Trick Room is about to expire. Yeah, it needs to try to trade some damage this turn. Is hoping to be able to take uh, whatever the Hattering throws out. This expanding force is going to do a lot of Big damage, damage, but not quite enough, which means Ogre Pond is going to be able to get a boosted attack off this turn. Yep, and Ogre Pond will opt for a Stomping Tantrum into that Hattering slot. Does get the one-hit KO because of that Fire Terrestrialization, but uh, down to the Ogre Pond and Amoongus over on Luka's side of the field. Uh, the Urshifu on Ben's side of the field, as well as Torkoal in the back. Yeah, getting the Urshifu in is helpful because I'm sure the Ogre Pond would love to protect through this last turn of Trick Room. Um, but of course, Urshifu has no protection against the Spore. Amoongus can just move first in this Trick Room and try to put it to sleep. Um, and the Torkoal on the other side is weakened. Can't go for an Eruption. Um, did get the chance to switch back out and come back in, which means it can pick a new move, can opt for Heat Wave or Weather Ball instead um, to have a different fire option. The Ogre Pond's still going to need to protect itself, wants to get through this last turn of Trick Room. Yep, uh, Ogre Pond will protect itself as Torkoal opts for a Weather Ball. Big damage in the sun into that Amoongus and gets the one-hit KO there. So it's going to come down to this Ogre Pond on Luka's side and how it can deal with the Urshifu and the Torkoal. Yeah, and so basically there was enough damage there to lock up the game. The yep. Weather Ball KOing Amoongus prevents the Spore from putting Urshifu to sleep, which means that Urshifu gets that Wicked Blow off, KOs Ogre Pond, and ends this game. Uh, just so, so much sheer damage. Ben needed one Trick Room. He ended, won the game on the last turn of the Trick Room. Five turn long game. Just barely has the damage to get it done. Yeah, so Ben right there using this hard Trick Room team to be able to just set up Trick Room, get in your sweeper extremely safely. I mean, what a setup that was with the Indeedee and the Hattering leads, right? Like, just immediately healing Wish just to knock out the Indeedee and be able to get in a Trick Room Super like Torkoal. Yeah, right the, the healing Wish is so smart because you saw that it really did take all four turns of that Trick Room for Ben to win. And it would, did not have the health bars to try to set up a second Trick Room if it had expired. And so if you waste a few turns with NDD needing to switch out, uh, wasting turns trying to wake up again from a Spore, then you're just not going to be able to clear this team within those four turns. But it recognizes that NDD is not important now as a health bar. It's important to just get it off the field, get attackers in, in the nick of time, uh, and get it done. Yeah, so amazing play and setup right there from Ben. So Luca is now going to have to try to figure out how to prevent uh, Trick Room from being so problematic. I mean, uh, the magic bounce on that Hattering is just so important just to be able to not be put to sleep by that Amoongus. And also, like, just the Torkoal threatens that Amoongus immediately off the bat. I mean, being able to send in your Torkoal for free under Trick Room, no risk of any damage, and Torkoal is not a speed Pokemon, just being able to fire off Sun Boosted, Choice Specs Boosted, eruptions at full health dangerous yeah absolutely dangerous it's hard to find the right combination of pokemon that can actually weather a turn against uh both the hatterin and the torkoal at the same time you know raging bolt can resist the eruption take not that much damage from it but then has to take a dazzling gleam that does so much yep and here we go game two of swiss round 13 ben leading the same the hatterin and that indeedy Ogre Pond and Amoongus over on Luka's side of the field. Yeah, so it could be more of the same, right? The same leads, the same options are available, but it's a scary thing because if you 
uh, go for exactly the same play of Terra Fire and Healing Wish. It could just be an embody aspect boosted stomping tantrum, KOing Hatterene and preventing Trick Room and really ending this game on the spot if you were to just lose two Pokemon. So very risky for Ben to try to find the same play, but that means that it's going to be a little bit easier for Luca. If, if that was the best play available for Ben and it is not feasible to go for it a second time, then what is the next option? What is the next step down in the matchup prep? Yeah, so Ben must be worried about going for the same option because of that threat that you have mentioned. Amoogus on Luka's side of the field will switch out. It is going to be the Incineroar on Luka's side. Uh, again, these Intimidates, not going to matter, but uh, if Torkoal does somehow get in safely, then at least Incineroar, Incineroar will be able to deal with uh, that Torkoal. Ogre Pond on Luka's side of the field is going to Terrasilize here. Get that Embody Aspect, exactly as you mentioned, that one stage of increased attack a possible stomping tantrum, if that Hatterene does terrestrialize, that is going to be a one-hit KO as we already saw in the last game. So here we go. How is Ben going to react to this? Indeed, he's just opting for a follow me here. Okay, great adjustment. Just not wanting to go for the same leads here or the same moves here. The stomping tantrum does land into that. Indeed, he does a little under 50%. Ogre Pond will take some chip damage from that Rocky Helmet, but Hatterene, most importantly, is able to set up Trick Room safely. Yeah, Hatterene gets the trick room safely. Ben makes the right adjustment. One turn ahead in both game one and game two. That little bit of chip could actually be impactful. I think that's about the same amount of health that Ogre Pond survived the expanding force with in game one, which means it's not probably going to be able to do that this time. But Incineroar's on the board where it needs to be, and Ben doesn't have that full momentum this time. NDD just stays on the field this time, uh, doesn't get to go down for free, but that does mean Ben has, still has four Pokemon. Uh, it's not always that you want your Pokemon to go down. Uh, NDD might be able to still get a healing wish off this turn and get itself off the board or uh, just continue to play and, and, and fight with the NDD. Yep, NDD will go for a Dazzling Gleam here. Not very effective into the Ogre Pond, but Incineroar will get the KO on NDD with a knockoff. Uh, Going to take a little bit of chip damage again from that Rocky Helmet. So now Ogre Pond will be able to go for an attack here. Uh, can go for some big damage. Will opt for the Ivy Cudgel. Lands into that Hatterene. And it is still a very strong attack and gets the one-hit KO from that range. Yeah, so not a great turn for Ben there, right? You can see the change that happens when NDD is, when is stuck on the field. Uh, it's not actually slow enough to move before the Incineroar just gets knocked off and KO'd. Um, and that means that without the force coming out, Ben probably expecting a spiky shield from the Ogre Pond on the other side. Uh, the uh, damage wasn't there to KO Ogre Pond, just some chip kind of dazzling gleam, which means that Ogre Pond gets the Ivy Cudgel off and sets this game at a 4-2 advantage in Luka's favor. But now it's a 4-2 advantage with the big attackers on the field. Urshifu, Choice Band Urshifu is here. Choice Specs Torkoal is here. They will never switch attacks. They will never switch off the field. They will just do damage for the next few turns and try to get through Luca's team in time. And it's really challenging to just lock yourself into that eruption button because if Torkoal takes any damage at all, that damage output uh, begins to just shrink and you never want to have a low health Torkoal on the other side of the, or you never want to have a low health Torkoal on your side of the field just opting to go for, you know, really pitiful sun boosted eruptions as Torkoal will terrestrialize. It will become the fire type to boost its fire type attacks even stronger. So this Torkoal right here trying to do as much damage as it possibly can here under this Trick Room. It is going to opt for an eruption. Uh, we saw Incineroar survive last time. Incineroar has taken a lot more damage, but Incineroar hangs on again with just a little bit of health. Does get the KO on that Ogre Pond, though. Yeah, Incineroar... Uh, <laughs> Torkoal really just needed to get one or the other because Urshifu will be able to eventually clean up uh, or deal damage. Of course, the Incineroar underspeeding the Urshifu and getting a parting shot off, um, which means the Urshifu attack is going to land into whatever takes this spot. Yeah, so uh, Luka has to send in a Pokemon here to just take an attack from this Urshifu. It will be the Amoongus that will try to sponge up this attack from the Urshifu. It is the Wicked Blow connecting in that Amoongus does a lot of damage. Amoongus will hang on and eat away at its Citrus Bear. They heal back to about 50% of its remaining hit points. Yeah, so Amoongus uh, takes a ton of damage for that parting shot. You get one stage of reduced special attack on Torkoal, but pay for it with Amoongus's health bar. Incineroar, very low in the back, will be able to come in at some point, but Intimidate is not going to matter with Urshifu locked into Wicked Blow and a special attacker next to it. Uh, Raging Bolt now has to try to stand up 
to this pair. Not going to mind the eruption too much, even as strong as it still is with Sun and Terra and Choice Specs. The minus one special attack and the Assault Vest will help mitigate that damage, but has to watch out for the Wicked Blow coming in from Urshifu. It's going to be a ton of damage combined. And of course, Amoongus cannot try to take an eruption despite a parting shot that is not nearly enough to help a half health Amoongus take a boost eruption so it does just protect itself and leave Raging Bolt to deal with this turn. Yeah, Amoongus does not want to get knocked out here. Torkoal, again, another sun boosted, choice specs boosted, Terra boosted, eruption at full health lands into that Raging Bolt. Uh, we saw that Raging Bolt take it extremely well and you see it again, like Raging Bolt without a soul fest, just such a bulky Pokemon, but here's the Wicked Blow, lands into Raging Bolt, gets the KO from that range, so just enough from that eruption to just Put that Raging Bolt in range, so these two choice locked sweepers in the back are doing work here for Ben. Yeah, they came in under Trick Room and got the job done. It looks like just so much damage coming out. You really can't imagine two more powerful Pokemon in VGC right now than a choice Specs Torkoal and a choice Band Urshifu Single Strike. And they Here's another had eruption. their run of this game. Torkoal dealing just a ton more damage, picking up the final two KOs and giving Ben the match. That was so much damage being dealt out in the final turns. Ben knocking out the Amoongus and the Incineroar, securing a win here in Swiss round 13 against Luca. So, uh, you know, Luca played his best, but Ben with the Trick Room team, just a little bit stronger. Just having that idea.